There's been some comments about the boilers and the weight distribution in each batch. I just thought I'd clarify some things for folks interested in pasture poultry. Cows and sheep are waiting to move and they are coming up here finally to get back in front of the Eggmobiles. And we're out of sync, we're normally following about 96 hours in front, both to keep the grass down and to feed the chickens with larvae from the cow pats. But we've got a we're not gonna get fully back in sync today because what we wanna do is cut the grass in front of the Eggmobiles here. So we're gonna have a little paddock just in front of this Eggmobile jump across to that one after lunch and then we can take the rest of this field before heading right up to the top of Nutfield where we can't take eggmobiles because it's crossing a marshy sort of drainage spot and it's getting a lot of woody regrowth there so we want to leave the sheep in there to take that down then everything moves back to top field for the second cycle and so we'll we'll be out of sync for a little while uh, but we'll get back on our plan today Here they come. <laughs> so we decided not to move this Eggmobile today. They've basically just flattened the grass. We've got beautiful sward here. It's really thick, really dense and a lot of clover and things popping up underneath that we want to take this down with the cows and the sheep just to make use of this forage before we move these guys again and because they've laid down so much grass they're not going to damage the land by staying an extra day some beautiful nut trees popping up in this savannah planting but the move went well and we'll be moving them after lunch over here just to make use of this grass. We actually uh, took the smallest birds and put them in one of the pens of the birds we just slaughtered this week. And what you find is the smallest birds just never catch up. It doesn't matter if you feed them more. It's not about competition with the feeders in our experience. It's a genetic weakness or variance that just plays up in weight range so we're usually slaughtering a batch over three weeks taking the largest first they're often male and then the smallest uh, the middle size the next week and the smallest in the last week but even with two weeks extra feeding those birds will never catch up with the largest birds so it's day 16 in the brooder for the third batch and already you see a, a weight range you know where the smallest birds are half the weight of the largest birds now if you raise a bunch of these birds you'll see that even when there's feed in the feeder the smaller birds are not being out competed at the feeder and they're often just not feeding when there's even food sitting uh, left. They're fed five times a day at this point and it goes down to four and then down to three. But it's not about competition for the feeder, it's a genetic variance and so it's typical to slaughter them over three weeks or so to allow them to catch up a bit but as I said they, they never actually catch up uh, with the largest birds and so it evens the average weights out but it's there's always a um, weight difference between the, the birds when you have this many. I filled up uh, a pen with solely small birds from, from, from the, the batch we just slaughtered yeah. and they didn't actually perform, they didn't grow. No it was quite evident that they were all very small. I, I, I did it to, to see if they if they would have less competition and have more chance to grow bigger, yeah. but didn't really succeed. Yeah, it's really, even in the brooder, it's not about yeah. space at the feeder, it's just about genetic Genetics. variance. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. Vines are coming up on their alders, and um, we'll be training them onto them and cleaning up and doing some weeding. It's 
bit overgrown now. Of course, it's been rampant and we've been super busy with chickens and getting the interns uh, acclimatized, as it were. So we'll be coming in here and just cleaning up around the trees and mulching them again. But it's a nice vine sticking up. Let's go and see the new alders we just planted this spring. This pond is about 11 months old, 10, 11 months old now. Hard to imagine what it was like before. It's hard to remember what it was like before now, actually. But it's settled in very nicely. It's maybe hard to see all the alders we've put in. Same sort of configuration as the alders over here. And they're leafed out nicely and developing well. Pioneer trees, so very hardy. We haven't really done any work other than planting them. But we will come and mulch these and kick back any grasses and get the new grapevines trained onto these. It's breakfast time, and here in our dining yurt, the swallows have decided to make a nest in a pretty inconvenient position. Now it's very nice to have them flying around, but it gets quite windy and stormy, and that roof flap gets opened uh, as a chimney to, to vent hot air out. So it's not the best choice for nesting. They're also nesting in our workshop. Here's, here they come. They're bringing in mud and sticks right now. It's kind of cute, but uh, I'm not sure it's going to work out too well for them. So we made a decision to let them build a nest and we put a GoPro there. And we've got photos every five minutes and hopefully we'll see them building their nest. We've come to the neighbours to pick up a free trampoline. They've been putting up fencing. And we're going to take some drone photos in exchange for a trampoline. Every car needs a trampoline. Is it worth having for the farm? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't know hurt ourselves working then at least. So we've been getting some footage for the neighbours. We did some winter shots for them, now we're doing summer shots. Taking the trampoline. And off we go. Nice little homestead. These guys started off last year building their homestead and they have woofers from different parts of the world coming up here that we get to meet at times. But they're not in right now, so we just take some photos and videos and send them to them. And we're off with a trampoline. Very nice. Farming is, you know, a lot to do with priorities and decision making. They're studying holistic management in here. And uh, we're working on quality of life statements. How do you like it, Misa? What do you think? You're not sure about that? So, second day of veg boxes going out and also microgreens and restaurant orders. Feeling good about it? Yeah, it's going very well. So we're down in one of the pig paddocks. This is the larch plantation. We're selecting trees for hop poles. And the hops are really putting on some growth that we want to fast track this process. The pigs won't be in here till very late in the year. And the larch is going to be more resistant in the ground for rotting. And so we're trying to select out 20 trees that will go along the riparian between the field and the riparian. And we're scaling up to 350 plants eventually, which supplies the local brewer with all his hop needs. So we're deciding to also take some of the spruce. We don't have enough larch. And we're going to open this ground up for more light. We might end up taking about half the trees out of here and also using some of that 
to build a bridge over to the neighbour's land that we're grazing. And the pigs have been through here once, but there's not enough sunlight to start growing pasture and forbs under this. So we want to thin it out and use the wood for projects around the farm and start getting more light on the ground here. Plugging in the seat to find out why it's not working. Because the engine, the ABS lights come on and the engine stalls randomly. Yeah, you have that one. Can't see it. The diagnostic computer. How should we? Basically. It's got problems. Yeah. Big problems? Nope. Uh, yeah, and no. <laughs> yeah, and no. <laughs> uh, it's quite common problems. But uh, the one, the last fault, this 16706, that's the one that is also okay. uh, that, that I have on the computer. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of a, a sensor that sits on the the. Van uh, no? Not camshaft, uh, the other shaft. <laughs> What's it called? For the crank, the crank, crank shaft. Yeah, yeah. Crank shaft. Yeah. You have a sensor on it that feels the turn. Yeah, and tells you if it's. And that sensor is broken. So yeah. it loses connection sometimes and then it do. Yeah. And it probably won't stop because it takes uh, another measure from, from the, the camshaft. Instead, because but it, when he loses that, it but, does that. How does that computer know that? <laughs> Not that computer, the car's computer. Yeah. Right? And I only read what the car has registered. Clever car. Yeah. Can it fix itself? Um, uh, probably not. Not on the 97 model? No, <laughs> you, have, you should have bought a 98. <laughs> I should really erase this. So you erase the data yeah. and then and we know then, what the problems could be. Yeah, and then because they you should really problems. the best thing if you if it stalls again, come back and I can read. Then I can again. tell exactly if it's yeah. or it's are all back. Then it's it's all problems, but probably just one. So we're resetting the computer's brain. Mm -hmm. Nice. So the cows and sheep have done their trampling work in here. You can see the line where the fence was here. And we moved them on, so this gives us a move with this segment bill to here. And then we're clearing the land in front of this segment bill to move them tomorrow. And we'll come back and take the middle piece with the cows and sheep. And we've got probably two or three more days for the cows and sheep to take the bottom here before they go back up to the top. We want to impact some of the woody willow vegetation that's coming back there. And then we've got to go back into top field on our plan, but it's not recovered fully in places because the boilers have had quite a big impact in there. In some parts it's looking good and you've got a few leaves. Uh, looking for four leaves on the grass plants to know for sure that they've recovered. And it's, you know, it depends at different times of the year and depends on what was grazed off last time. Um, but we'll see, we're going to go and look over in the neighbor's land, see how that's recovering now. Maybe we'll adjust our plan and go back over there. So we'll make an evaluation and a decision later on. The rams have been strip grazing through medicine cabinet. This is Saskatoon and Aronia and Elder, different cultivars on little contour plantings here. So here we are coming into Kent's land now. This was where we came in six weeks ago. And you see that we have uh, three or four leaves and some of these grasses, Coxfoot here, and there's Timothy here, and it's put on four true leaves. So this grass is recovered and ready to graze again. So I think we're going to change our grazing plan and come in here again and let our land recover for a couple more weeks. And we're aiming for as much active root in the ground as long as we can throughout the year. So I think it's uh, a time to consider. Uh, it looks pretty obvious to me that we come back through here before we go off um, back on around our land again.
It'll be interesting to see how the cows respond to this. Now, when you have tall grasses like this gone to seed, it's a lot of people are not into grazing this because it's gone past its vegetative state. But actually, there's a lot of energy in these tips near the sun and a lot more protein down low to the ground. So it allows the animals to select the material they want to make up their diet. And naturally, they must be pretty, you know, they're naturally they're the best at deciding what it is they need to eat. So we'll watch very carefully coming through here. If we make our way through the shelter belt here, I really love this little shelter belt between these paddocks. We come to land that we were on just five weeks ago. And it's very shaded here after midday. But a lot of seed formation. And you see uh, some of the rye grasses. You've got three true leaves now. So not quite recovered ready for us to come back in, but it would be another 10 days or so till we make it up to the top corner here. So probably it's totally fine by then. We'll go and look at top field because I was looking there this morning and that's why it prompted me to change the grazing plan. So we'll go and have a look up there and compare. Well, as I always say, forests grow on dead forests. Here's a nice example of a birch, one of the pioneer species growing out of an old spruce stump. There's also some uh, wild raspberries here. Regeneration in action. This whole area is where the pigs were last season. You see the species that start to come up here. There's some wild currants here. But a very different assembly of species and a different flurry of succession to what's in the pasture immediately next door. So here we are at the top of Topfield. These pens are empty now. But you see the ground in front of the broiler pens. The ground hasn't recovered from the first pass uh, the cows and sheep. It's put, you know, most of the grasses have put on two, some three true leaves. So we're going to leave them. Obviously where the broilers have been, it's not recovered at all. So that's the beauty of managing holistically, is we're totally flexible in our management according to what's most beneficial uh, to the whole, you know, in terms of the landscape, and in this case the grass and forbs that we're grazing. And so I think we're changing the whole grazing plan tonight, and it's a holistic management training. So it's a perfect example of flexible management, shifting things around to do what's optimal for the land and the animals. And so we'll make a new grazing plan that takes us back through Kent's land, probably in a very fast rotation, to get us back round the farm again before we leave the farm at the end of July to stockpile our farm and take the neighbour's land right down because that's one of his conditions. And then we will try and graze as slowly as possible through our land um, to be able to reduce our winter needs for imported food, as it were, like hay. So interesting times and we knew things would shift around as we went because we've never had the animals off farm or had as many animals as we had this year either. So based on the grass we're changing the plan so we're just making a new line in the plan focused mainly on the cows and sheep who are spending a couple more days in Nutfield then going to cycle back through Kent's land fast as the grass is growing fast back through our land fast to reconnect with our plan to stockpile our farm from the 1st of August onwards. And again, it might change, but you know, plans change and we knew it would change because we've never grazed in this way before. But I'm happy with that, to, to go into Kent's land when the grass is fully recovered and there's tall standing grass with, you know, mixtures of species with high energy food, high protein food, and allow our grass to go up. Now we're gonna to have to keep the eggmobiles in our land, so that will affect things too in terms of recovery, as well as the next batch of broilers going into Nutfield. And it's planned that batch four of broilers go in there too, but I left a question mark because we'll assess it when we get to that point. Now we're trying to avoid going over the same ground twice with broilers uh, for the nitrogen loading. So I've based the new plan around the cows and sheep because the layers can't go into the neighbor's property 
and so they have to keep cycling and they're mainly trampling at the moment and they're not uh, they're trampling vegetative grass still so it's not breaking the stems it's just pushing it over and then it pops back up again after they leave so i think it's it's a good plan as always thanks for watching our videos appreciate your views and comments etc and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video share them with your friends you can find out a lot more in our book, Making Small Farms Work. We keep getting the amazing feedback from that from around the world, from people that's helping out with their work on their farms and their design of their landscapes. So I really appreciate hearing those comments. It's a real pleasure to send out the books from the farm. And thanks again, and we'll see you next time.